On a January morning in 1915, a ship landed in Bombay from South Africa. After 27 years away from India, Mohandas Gandhi was coming home. Waiting for this humble man were crowds of people who had never seen Gandhi in person, but his return held great promise for them. As a lawyer in white-ruled South Africa, Gandhi had won rights for the 75,000 Indians living there. He did this by using a new form of protest that he called Satyagraha, derived from the Sanskrit words meaning truth and force. Gandhi firmly believed that people could never win their rights through violence. Satyagraha was more than just a political tactic for Gandhi. It was a moral force, and it had gained him thousands of followers back home. One of them was the writer Rabindranath Tagore, who gave Gandhi the title Mahatma, meaning great soul. During his time away, Gandhi had traded in the suit and tie of a British-trained lawyer for the uniform of the lower classes, the dhoti, a traditional loincloth made of rough, simple fabric. Now back in India, Gandhi founded an ashram, a self-reliant community, and sat at a wooden spinning wheel every day, making thread for the dhoti. As he turned cotton into thread, he was showing Indians that instead of sending their cotton away to England to be made into textiles, they could make cloth themselves. Soon, people all over India were learning how to spin and weave. It was a first step towards India's independence from British rule. Gandhi began to travel, demanding independence for India. He held peaceful protests, willingly went to prison, and even staged hunger strikes against laws that he felt were unjust. One of those laws prohibited Indians from making their own salt. Gandhi decided he would walk 240 miles to the coast to protest the law, along with 78 followers. Soon they had swelled to a thousand. Once he reached the sea, Gandhi bent down and collected a few grains of salt. He had broken the law. Across the country, Indians did the same. They boiled salt water to extract the salt. They also boycotted British goods. 50,000 people were sent to prison, but the protesters committed no violence. Gandhi became known worldwide, and the British began to lose their grip on India. My speeches at the Roundtable Conference have all officially reported. It is complete independence that we won. Offered freedom by British Prime Minister Attlee in March. By the end of World India War II, India would gain its independence. The British have met with but Gandhi India wouldn't celebrate. He had dreamed of a united India where Hindus, Muslim, and Sikh would live side by side in peace. But settlement of India's tangled affairs presented many problems. The Muslims insisted on their demand for their own separate state and complete independence from the Hindu majority. Instead, the subcontinent would be divided into a Hindu India and a Muslim Pakistan. With independence came large-scale outbreaks of violence. It was on January 30, 1948, while he was praying for peace, that Gandhi was gunned down by a Hindu extremist. Despite the divisions in India, Gandhi became a symbol of truth and nonviolence throughout the world. To all South Africans, today is a day like no other before it. And since his death, others have used Gandhi's method of satyagraha to fight for peace. In Jackson, Mississippi this year, a sit-in group, including whites as well as Negroes, stoically faced a moment of grotesque violence. As Gandhi wrote in 1946, mankind has to get out of violence only through nonviolence. Hatred can be overcome only by love.